Last week I showed you how I got the tractor running again after so many years of just sitting still. Now I need to move a few things around in my carport so I can drag that huge tree up onto the sawmill. You remember this big old project? Well, we gotta get that out of the way too. Now after I got a bunch of this stuff over here moved out of the way, you might realize like I did is that I had the stoppers on the wrong side for the sawmill. I can't easily flip the sawmill around, so unfortunately I'm gonna have to deal with it on this project. In the future I'm gonna go about moving and rearranging this whole other side over here so that I can just drive the tractor up and easily just roll the log onto it. But for now, this is what we got. Now the plan is to use these tongs to grab hold of the tree and to, well, wrap this around the hitch that's there. I know this is probably not the safest thing to do, so uh, just keep that in mind, but uh, let's give this a shot. apparently really underestimated how much this log weighs, so we're going to have to figure something else out. <sighs> Good thing I keep a bunch of scrap metal. That might work as a skidding plate. The skidding plate seemed to work well till I got about here and now I'm just plowing up the ground so I need to figure something else out. Alright, well with no luck that means I have to admit defeat and do the walk of shame over to my neighbor's house to borrow his tractor. Big shout out to my neighbor John, thank you so much for taking the time to come over and help me move that huge log. Uh, I still love my tractor, but he definitely has a much nicer and much more powerful one than I do. Thanks again. Now when I tried to roll this log, I slightly overcompensated or undercompensated, whatever the correct word is trying to get it really close to the sawmill without hitting it, but um, I missed it by about an inch and it rammed into the edge of it. Uh, it dented it just very slightly, but I don't think it did any major damage, so let's continue. After giving this a good hard try, there's zero chance of me getting this log, which we're estimating somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds up on the sawmill by myself. So, I'm gonna get a previous project to see if we can lift it.
Now this gantry worked great. If by chance you're interested in building one of these, I'll put a link to that video in the description. Now just like a few other times during this process, I've run into another snag. If you look here, the log looks way too big for this sawmill, and in its current configuration it is. But I have learned of a couple techniques that raise the sawmill up just a little bit so I can get that first initial cut, and then hopefully I can turn this log so everything else will be a lot easier. Now this is the Harbor Freight sawmill, and the main limitation for height is actually the push bar. That's what helps you control it going back and forward during the cut. And if I remove this, it becomes very unsafe. So what I'm about to do, I do not recommend but I'm just showing you what I did to make this cut. Now here are the original holes and I've just lifted this up enough to hopefully give me that three or four inches more of height I need. And I just added a couple zip ties here. It's surprisingly holding it in place. I can't put pressure on it, but it's holding it up out of the way. Now let's see if it'll go up high enough. Ooh, look at her, that is so close. I got a little extra room on this side, but I will bump it on this side, so we'll see if we can move the log over. I've just temporarily added a saw horse here on this side to keep it from rolling off the sawmill. I got a little bit of bark still in the way. I'm gonna try and knock it out with a hammer. Ooh, buddy, now that is a close one, but it should work. Check out the inside of this thing. All right. That is some beautiful spalting going on right there. Heading up this way, the tree tapers a little bit so it gets a little more narrow and there's not any spalting this way that I can see. But that right there is a great start. Look at this. Looks like a little copper color and maybe some lead. I have a feeling that's a bullet. Here's the other side of that bullet. You can still see a little bit of copper reflecting on this one too. Now I've managed to turn this thing 90 degrees and my goodness it took everything I had just to do that. So we're going to leave it at 90, do another cut and hopefully be able to turn it again. Some more very pretty wood. A little bit of spalting down here in the end. Every time I go to spin this log, I have this little two by four with a 45 degree angle that I shove under it every time it moves. Just keeps it a lot safer. Just in case you are wondering, before I cut all the rings off, I decided to count them, and this tree is about 150 years old. Looking at this end, you can see some more spalting going on, but as I travel over to this end, wow, I believe this is some of the natural interior color of the wood starting to show through. That's just gorgeous.
Good thing we're in a carport because here comes the rain. Put some more of that natural brown peeking through right here in the middle. Now before you start cutting your tree into slabs, it's a good idea to go ahead and prep some what they call stickers. These are just spacers that go in between all your pieces of wood. The easiest way I've found to do that is just take some scrap 2x4s or just to go buy some new 2x4s and I like to cut them at about 1 inch thickness and that will allow that plenty of air to get in between each of these slabs. So far, this bolting doesn't go very far up the tree. Wow, it's got some beautiful heartwood. Well, this just happened. The whole camera fell over, got bumped by the sawmill, and broke off. The tabs that hold the lens on are broke, and the cannon itself won't even start. Well, guess I gotta buy a new camera. Talk about heck of a circumstance trying to get this log cut. And with my main camera out of commission, I will try to film the rest of this on my phone. Now for storage, I'm using some concrete blocks and I have it raised up with a sticker. And then I have the board sitting on top of those to keep it off the floor and hopefully moisture out of it. And I have another set of stickers sitting on top waiting for the second slab. Wow, this wood just keeps getting prettier and prettier. Got three slabs cut. And looking back at this main log here, you can see I've reached the center of it on this side. And a little bit in the middle there, but not over here on this end yet. When I cut this last piece, it decided to split on me. I guess there was a major check that I didn't realize. And right here at the bottom, some of the major rot or spalting was really starting to take effect right there. But a little ways up, it's looking very pretty. I tried to go with a smaller one inch slab on this cut and wow, that just came out beautiful. It was also so much easier to put on the pile. With six slabs finally cut, I can't Stop saying it enough. This wood is just gorgeous. I hope you can truly see how pretty it is through the camera. Now I've been told if you pour a little bit of water on this, it looks even better. So let's give that a shot right here in this grain area. Ooh. Wow. I hope you can see how oh, that really pops with the water. Gorgeous grain. Let's try over here where there's some of the spalting. Wow, look at that really pop. Here's an awesome little tip for you. If you're trying to move some big slabs and put them over on a pile, but you're only working by yourself, get a sawhorse. It's going to make it a lot easier to transfer them. There we go. A grand total of 11 slabs. We have six at two inches and five at one inch. Now that top one right there may only be about half usable. That's okay. We still get plenty of good lumber on this side. Just one more thing to keep in mind that the one inch slabs are gonna take about a year to air dry and the two inch slabs are gonna take about two years or more. If you want a quicker process, you'll have to get a solar kiln. And to keep the top board from warping, I took one of my first cuts that's really heavy and stuck it on the top.
If you're thinking about getting a sawmill, I'd probably suggest doing it. But first, make sure you have the room, not only for the sawmill, but for the storage for all the wood, like all I have back here, because it's gonna have to sit there for a long period of time to dry out. Otherwise, get out there and cut up some wood. 